Welcome everybody to November. This is On the Top and Hot and I am John Zadar. These are brought to you by Penny Boys. Everybody knows about the PB alerts. We love those quick alerts to make some money. But the PBU, Penny Boys University, that's got an education you really got to get. That pays even better. So what I'm doing today is following up on some requests. I've had a lot of people asking me to take a look at the company Phil Group, ticker P-H-I-L. Now I didn't have, well, I really didn't have an idea what Phil was about, so I had to jump into it and do some investigating. And it has been in the social media for a long time, it's had a lot of good bounces, and it's been in the news a lot for a long time. So there was a lot to get into. And I'm gonna make this as simple as I can, as best as I've understood it, and hopefully you'll see the value I see in this. Come along. So over here at one of Five Group's websites, they've got quite a few, but most of them don't tell you much. They've got all the buttons up here, but when you start clicking into them, they don't tell you anything. They tell you that you have to be a member, see? And I don't know where to get an account here, so I couldn't get the information the way I wanted it. But we can start here and I can fill in a lot of blanks for you. The company originally started in 1982 as JR Consulting. In 2000, they went and acquired themselves a California bank slash asset management company, which is really where the business started. Then in 2009, that's when they became Phi Group, and 2017, they shuffled from Nevada over into Wyoming. Now, the company's got a few different subsidiaries and one I don't see here listed here is uh, Vina Film which they got 51% of not too long ago however I know Vina Film entered into a deal with Pacific Plastics so it's quite possible that something happened with the company and the name that I'm not aware of but I'm only going to be zooming in on basically three of the prongs the primary three that they're working with right now so of all the subsidiaries they have, these are the three that they're primarily focused in right now. Not neglecting the others, but this is the ones that have, well, the biggest thrust right now. Phi Group Inc., Phylex Capital Advisors, and Phylex Global Funds. And all three are really working together to do the same thing, to build on their investments. The Phi Group is a target portion of it. They primarily focus on finding the mergers and the acquisitions to invest in. They look at select industries, special situations. They look for things that are going to add shareholder value. Then you have the advisors, which take the ball over from there. And they help these companies to go to the market as well as find financing for them. And this has happened before. This is one of the companies they invested in not too long ago, uh, Hoing Kwan Group. They invested $200 million into them. Uh, they tell us that this is one of the first and only companies to bring Vietnamese companies to the NASDAQ market and the German market. Then the primary focus is Phylux Global Funds. Now this is based out of Luxembourg. It is a fund that can be broke down into subcategories so that they can invest in separate things in separate avenues and not commingle them. Real estate, infrastructure, renewable energy, healthcare, as well as the proposed Chulai Multiple Commodity Center, the Asia Diamond Exchange, and the Luchai open economic center. I didn't get all that written there. <laughs> but these are free trade zones in Vietnam. The diamond exchange is in Vietnam. As a matter of fact, most of the business done by this company is done in Vietnam. Now why would a USA company be doing so much investing in Vietnam? Well, Vietnam has experienced some rapid economic development and social change in the past 30 years. They were formerly thought of as an emerging economy, but now they are categorized more as a middle income country with a lot of potential. They are now part of an elite group of countries that are creating free trade zones, which hold strong incentives for foreign investors. As one of the fastest growing economies in the Asian market, Vietnam is currently demanding for more financial investment of up to $605 billion to meet 83% of its infrastructure goals by 2040. Among the sectors that have been given the utmost priorities are the urban transportation, railroad, and port infrastructure. 
Now you gotta understand, currently only 20% of the country's national roads are paved. And recently, they just approved to build Vietnam's North-South High-Speed Railway along with the North-South Highway. Now this is going to allow passengers to travel between Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City, the two major cities on the north and south end of Vietnam, in a matter of hours. And this is going to cost them 26 billion US dollars. And Vietnam is also planning significant investments designed to create world-class ports in the next phase of their master plan. And this is going to cost them about 8 billion dollars. And with Vietnam's population with over 50% to be living in the city soon, Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh are building rapid transit systems exceeding $22 billion in hopes of reducing private vehicle ownerships which are cluttering the streets overwhelmingly so and hopefully improving air quality. So they do have various expressway projects that are planned and underway to improve connectivity with major cities. Similarly, development and upgrading of urban utilities, infrastructure are announced and there are 44 planned projects with a total investment value worth of $120 billion just in road and power sectors alone. I told you earlier that there were incentives for foreign investors to invest in Vietnam. And here it is. I found a page that tells us the benefits of setting up a business in Vietnam Free Zone. And they, this is specifically just to entice foreign investors in. It tells us here that the uh, corporate income tax will have a maximum of 10% for 15 years. Foreign and local employees are eligible for 50% reduction in personal income tax, 50% reduction. Approved projects are exempted from corporate income taxes for four years. They've got more. High technology products have 10% income tax rate reduction for 30 years. Educational, 10% reduced. Imported and manufactured goods. There are all kinds of benefits here that make it worthwhile. And for big corporations investing big money, these percentages add up to big dollars. And as I said, Vietnam is growing at a tremendous rate right now. And these free trade zones are just where the money is pouring in. Now, I told you that a lot of money is poured in, and it has. I'm looking at a press release that is over here on the otcmarkets.com. I come here because this is where all the current information from the SEC and the FINRA is put so that investors can find it. And if the company's nice and polite, they also put all their news up here, which they did. And the last piece of news proves my point. They just got $1.5 billion from TPP Holdings Group for the build out of the Vietnam Free Trade Zone. This includes the Asia Diamond Exchange as well as the infrastructure that we've been discussing. Now it tells us right here that even though this is an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, which is far from a letter of intent as far as I'm concerned, but in either case, it tells us here that as early as next week, they anticipate to expedite this process and get it moving fast. Now, this has been in the works for quite a while. Uh, another company about a year ago jumped into this fund and started working with them as well. So this isn't a brand new thing. It's just picking up some serious momentum. Now, for some clarity. The Asian Diamond Exchange is a modern bourse to be established in affiliation with the World Federation of Diamond Bourses. A bourse is just a term for exchange for countries that don't speak English. Um, this is fully compliant with the Kimberley attestation process. It is located near an international airport in the new Global Commodity Center. They just built an airport over there within the free trade zone. Um, now, this is just as good as uh, Dubois Multi-Commodity Center for Diamonds and I think a Twerpy or a Twerp or something like that, the other one. There it is, Antwerp from Belgium, right. So this isn't some little exchange. This is a major exchange that is going to sell diamonds, rough cut, and jewelry. Now, 
What makes this special is that they're going through blockchain. Now, I can't talk about the Asia Diamond Exchange without talking about the token that they just brought out. Now, let me show you what I'm speaking of here. I found this, which kind of puts it in a nutshell for us. Just last week, Phil announced the launch of the ADE token in South Korea in connection with the Asia Diamond Exchange. The token is designed to optimize transparency about the diamonds and fair pricing to the diamond industry to provide enhanced benefits to all stakeholders. This will validate transactions on the blockchain. There are no chances of counterfeit diamonds or substandard pieces. Consumers will be able to design and purchase custom diamond jewelry and loose gemstones at significantly better prices by using the ADE tokens. The ADE tokens will be deflationary by setting aside profits to purchase and burn tokens as well as systematically continuing the buyback of fill stock on the ongoing basis in the future. International investors may purchase and trade the tokens once they are listed on the top exchanges. So there's a couple of things I want to go to here. First off, this exchange is blockchain. Blockchain is a permanent ledger of everything from the time it is there to the time it is gone it's always ledgered so these diamonds can be proved not to be blood diamonds they can see where they came from what mines whose hands they went through to the ultimate consumer themselves so that a buyer has confidence that he is getting what he wants and he's not putting money on things he doesn't want and folks right now China is exploding in diamonds they are buying diamonds and jewelry at a phenomenal rate they've increased 83 percent over pre-covid times right now and the only reason they haven't been buying is they don't one like the resale value of diamonds and two there is no confident way to buy the diamonds and this is supposed to change all that so that we can now truly know the source of all diamonds and they can be ledgered forever the other thing i want to mention here is that they talk about buying back stock now i read some 10ks those are annual financial reports from 2019 they had planned on buying back approximately 5 billion shares. They said they would do it throughout the year. You read the 10K this year, they planned on buying 15 billion shares back off the open market at their discretion to be done by about December 31st. Well, the fact of the matter is they haven't. There are some purchases and I'm going to show those to you. They are nice size purchases by the CFO and such, but not enough to qualify for 15 billion by any means and there wasn't very much sold in 2019 or I should say bought so I'm not too sure about the buyback I wouldn't put a lot of faith into that because it actually hasn't been going the way they say just putting the cards on the table the way I see them another piece of news that they had that came out was the distillery which I found very intriguing this one right here now this news came out on September 17th. They have signed another memorandum of understanding to acquire 70% ownership in five grain treasure spirits. This is a company with over 100 years experience in Jilin province, China. And the company recognizes this to be a very unique and special situation that can bring them a lot of value. According to the MOU, the company is going to pay $100 million for their 70% stake, which isn't a bad deal when you consider that Five Grains expects to annually generate over $600 million in revenue, and the company is going to get 70% of that. Darn good deal. Now, it says here that Five Grain is a reputable bulk alcohol supplier to some of the largest spirit companies in the world. Now, that is a big deal when you consider this piece of news right here. Kiwao Chao Mauti, the largest alcohol company in the world, has recently crossed a $500 billion valuation mark with a single Baju product. What is Baju? Well, that is what this company sells. Baju is a white spirit distilled from sorghum. It is similar to vodka, but with a more fragrant aroma and taste. It is currently the most consumed spirit in the world, and I've never heard of it. Mainly consumed in China, maybe that's why, and is gaining popularity in the rest of the world. Well, this company 
That's their single product, and they enjoy a 50 times expected revenues. That's their ratio, 50 times. And Five Grain will supply the bulk spirits to them as well as other companies. When you're supplying the bulk spirits to the biggest supplier in the world, you're doing a lot of business too. And with this type of multiple, Phi Group is confident this will bring tremendous value to all the shareholders. Now to consummate this deal, what the company has done is taken one of their subsidiaries, Provamex, and they changed the name to Empire Spirits. And this will be the vehicle that they use to move forward with this. Now the last piece of news I want to focus in on is for the big picture down the road. And I was kind of excited to see this because it really shows a mindset for the company that you don't see in a lot of companies. So this news basically has all to do with tax credits for carbon. Just like Tesla used to get, the carbon tax credits is free money that the country pays you for doing a good job for knocking down greenhouse gases. Now, Vietnam is part of the United Nations Paris Agreement to knock down the greenhouse gases and they are targeted for 834 million tons of it. Now the problem is, is that the program isn't set up and complete yet. Currently the tax credit program is being tediously registered, validated, and certified centrally under the UNFCC methodology by few independent institutions, mostly in the US and Europe where the tax credits can be traded later voluntarily. But for the past five years, the market for carbon credits is nearly zero. And due to the complexity of the processes, many companies have less of an appetite to engage in the carbon credit opportunity. It is a long road. They tell us here that though the carbon market is still in hibernation stage, tax credit values are estimated to be about $100 a ton by 2030 but they estimate that the demand for the carbon credits should increase by a factor of 15 by 2030 and a factor of 100 by 2050, putting the overall carbon credit market at a value of over $50 billion by 2030. And they're gonna have a piece of this. The carbon credits are being accumulated right now. They just can't be traded in, but they're still worth something and they're going to be worth more because this is a long-term agreement greenhouse gases so i see this as being a good long-term investment on top of their immediate investment into vietnam along with all their other small subsidies that have multiple streams of income coming in now let's go take a look at the chart and see what it looks like and see if there's a good price to get in and where what's its high been is it going to break it so we're over here at TOS, that's short for Think or Swim. You've probably heard of it. It's a free trading platform. It comes from TD Ameritrade. Just sign up with them. That's free too. They'll give you a link. Just keep your account open. You don't have to trade. Just keep it open. And folks, if you're trading without a chart, you're not trading. You're guessing. Okay. We are looking at Phil, P-H-I-L, and this is on a one-year chart. We can see a full year here, and she started off on the floor. It actually says zero. I'm not going to zoom in on that, but it was very, very, very low. Hit two cents here in about uh, the middle of this year, and it is now down to 0073. You can see that this 200, she has been riding above this for a long time, and this is a very strong, simple moving average. The 200 has gravity, lots of gravity. So we have to be careful of where this sits during our trades. It has a lot of effect. We always wanna be on top of it. We'd like all of our other SMAs to be on top of it as well, which they all are here. But the price did break through here just at the end of uh, last month, and it is luckily coming back up, which is a sign of strength. It did not want to stay below there and it pushed right back up like a rubber ball on water. Let's come forward now to a month. All right, this is on the one hour. You can see that she has been falling for a while and had an abrupt drop that hit a low bubble. And we see that a lot, abrupt drops that hit low bubbles. We also see that they bounce back pretty quick. Why is that? Because a low bubble for a stock that has value is like a blue light special at Kmart. Oh, you don't know what that is. Okay, it's a flashing for sale sign and people won't pass a sale. And they see this has value. It comes back quickly. Now it didn't return right back to where it fell, but it covered 50% immediately. Fell, came back. 
Now it took three days, but it did come back. Patience is always part of your trade. Maybe a little, maybe a lot, because timing is the factor that patience controls. So she meandered up and down on this support. You know, this goes straight across. You can see she was hitting it, coming down, hitting it, coming down. And then she came up and broke the 200, which was a real good sign. But you can't always expect the first one. That is the uh, impulse. That is the test. It comes up once, breaks it. It'll come down under it again. And then the second time you can normally get the feel for where it's going to go. You see she had a strong jump and took off. And then she took off hard. Why did she do that? This is my favorite signal. The yellow line here is the 50 day simple moving average and the red is the 200. When I see the 50 go above the 200, that's a power sign. I look for these setups all the time and I look for how strong they are and how far they can run. Now this one didn't have a huge run. There's no doubt about it. It hit a high bubble when it did it. Ta-da! So it had some force but it pulled back immediately off that and didn't stop falling. Now the way it looks, you see lots of buys here and a fall, buys and a fall, a big bar of buy and a fall. It looks as though they're accumulating this stock as it comes down. They're not selling it off, they're buying it off. They're bringing the price down in purchases. So I believe that this will probably, because it's not being pushed down, it's gently floating down like a balloon that's just losing its helium. And I think it'll bounce off this 007, 0069. I think it'll bounce off that and go back up. It may just tip underneath it. But if you see it go two bars, which is what we call a confirmation, if you see it go under the support two bars, the chances are, the likelihood is that it's going to fall. So we would not want to buy just as it breaks. If it goes under this, don't buy right here. Chances are it just went down through the floor. It's at the ceiling again. The helium balloon without helium is going to fall down to this one down to the next floor. And this is at 0065. So if it does not bounce, as I suspect it will, it should just land down here. And you can get a good price between 0066 and 0069, which is where I think I will probably buy it. Bought this a long time ago, sold it too early for a quick gain. As I said, patience is the factor to true profits. Find a company that's not just surging, but growing, has something in the field growing. They just don't have plants coming up this year. They got trees coming up decades from now. And this company is probably going to show a lot of growth between now and then. I'm in. How about you? Phil. I like Phil, but I got to tell you, it's tough to do a video on it because <laughs> there's just not a lot of pictures to show. They don't have products. And when you're talking finances and investments, there's not a lot of pretty I can give you, but it sounded pretty good. I really like the fact that they're in Vietnam, China, and Korea. It is a very large market. It is a market that has a lot of shakiness considering what we've been going through with China. Uh, but since the last president left office and the new president has come in. It seems that dealings with China have become a little easier and we can make money with them right now. So I like this company. I'm probably going to get into it again. I was into it a long time ago and so too early. So hopefully I've shared something with you. Look at Phil. There's a lot of information, folks, but the gist of what it is, I've shown you. So Make your decision based on your own DD, not just my DD. You can't know too much. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.